Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Uh, my name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson number 148, uh, we'll talk about another fallacy of distributed computing, and that's the fallacies of compensating updates. And now you can get a listing of all of my lessons and actually view these lessons through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons, or you can just click on the lessons link. Um, I do sometimes take some of my Software Architecture Monday material from these two books I recently wrote with my friend Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. So in Lesson 147, two weeks ago, I talked about the eight fallacies of distributed computing that were coined in the mid-90s by Peter Deutsch and some other folks from Sun. As a matter of fact, in Lesson 18, I kind of talked about each of those eight fallacies. Now, uh, two weeks ago, in Lesson 147, I kind of introduced uh, fallacy number nine of distributed computing, which is versioning is simple. And it's not, because a fallacy is something we believe to be true and is not true. Well, what I want to introduce in this lesson is fallacy number 10 of distributed computing, which Neil Ford and I coined, and that is this compensation or compensating updates always work. Well, a fallacy is something we believe to be true. And how many times do we just make the assumption in a distributed transaction where we're trying to gain a level of automicity that when we do transaction reversals, those will always magically work. We make the assumption that they will and they don't always work. And there's two reasons why they don't work. <laughs> and let me show you those. First, let's do kind of a scenario. Uh, so we've got a customer on a web app who's ordering something, and I've got an order placement service, a payment service, and inventory management. So a customer creates an order, wants to buy something. Order placement creates that order, order number one, two, three. Sends a, talks to over to a, a payment processing and says we need to pay for this. And so we charge the customer 90 US dollars for that order. And finally, order placement tells inventory management service we need to decrement the inventory from 68 to now 67 units. Everybody's all good and we create the order. Now notice in a distributed transaction, each of these actions has its own database commit because this is a distributed transaction. Well, we can't do a unit of work commit and rollback like any ACID transaction we can in a monolith or a single service. So, what happens when failures occur? Well, we create the order, order placement inserts that order, uh, tells payment processing to apply payment. Okay, we applied the payment, $90 that's been charged, and now we need to decrement inventory but that fails. Well, in this case, I'm trying to maintain a level of automicity and data consistency. So I can't issue a rollback. So now, typically what I would do is issue a compensating update. I would now tell payment processing to reverse that $90 charge, of which it does. I delete that order from my tables and I send an error back to the customer. Notice through the use of compensating updates, we've got eventual consistency. We are consistent and we're simulating that atomic unit of work transaction. This is exactly where the fallacy of compensating updates occur. And let me show you the two problems that occur with this particular fallacy because compensating updates don't always work. And the first problem are side effects. Because we don't have an ACID transaction, now ACID again stands for automicity, isol uh, consistency, isolation, and durability. We don't have transaction isolation, nor do we have automicity, nor do we have consistency. So watch what happens. We create an order that gets created, order one, two, three, that's inserted. Apply the payment, $90. Now that's inserted into the table, charged, and committed in our table. But during the course of this transaction, 
accounts receivable queries that information and ends up putting it into its own table that we received $90. Now, I go to inventory management. Oh, and it also starts generating reports as well. <laughs> it gets even better. <laughs> now, inventory management, we need to decrement. We can't. There's something wrong. We get an error. Well, issue a compensating update. I do, but the problem is now, pass back the error, but these are the side effects that can occur. Because we don't have transaction isolation in a distributed transaction, we applied a compensating update to payment, but we had no idea that accounts receivable queried me for that information or directly accessed that table. And now that $90 is posted in a ledger. These are the side effects that can occur when we try to do reversals of transactions and we don't know that other action has already been taken. Well, the other part about the fallacy of compensating updates is that they don't always work because sometimes they fail. So we've already applied the payment and the accounts receivable has already queried that and started generating its reports when in fact inventory management fails. Issue a compensating update for payment because the customer is still waiting for this. We issue a compensating update and this is the second part of this fallacy because we make the assumption that will work. And what if that fails? What if I'm unable to reverse that charge? Now I'm really in a mess because I'm not sure what I should do here. Uh, first of all, I can't do anything about the side effect because I didn't even know people were using that information already without them trying to reverse. Uh, but I'm not sure right here what I should do about that order because it's already been paid, but I couldn't decrement inventory. So my data is all out of sync now. And consequently, I'm not actually sure what I should tell the customer <laughs> because we probably don't want to reissue this order. And so now we're really in a mess. And this is kind of the problems and the issues uh, that come about with distributed transactions and compensating updates. So fallacy number 10 of distributed computing, compensating updates always work. No, they don't always work. And they also can produce side effects. So this has been Lesson 148, uh, yet another fallacy, a new fallacy of distributed computing. Um, but in two more weeks, um, stay tuned for the next lesson where we'll go on a different topic and talk about another aspect of software architecture. I kind of thought these past two weeks would be fun to talk about some of the fallacies that, uh, that Neil, Neil Ford and I have been coining and trying to evangelize. So Anyways, thank you so much for listening. Uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.